The first pay-per-view for 2024 is in the books, and unfortunately or fortunately for some, I am late reviewing it. With the UFC travelling up to Toronto, Canada, they put on a card full of Canadian talent, with two title fights headlining, with the vacant women's bantamweight title on the line in the co-main event, and the main event a heated and interesting bout between everyone's new favourite fighter Sean Strickland and the tough and game Drikas Duplessis. Could this pay-per-view deliver to the fans and give the Canadian crowd something to remember? This is the fight franchise and the recap and review of UFC 297. The early prelim started with some fun bouts and action, with the card opener Malcolm Gordon taking on Jimmy Flick, where hometown Gordon was unable to start the Canadians off with a win, where Jimmy Flick weathered early pressure and managed to secure the submission to silence the Canadian fans. Jasmine Jastavicius took on Priscilla Cachoeira and put on a dominant display dominating Cachoeira over three rounds, where she managed to get the submission in the third round and get a point on the board for the Canadian fighters. The final bout of the early prelims was Johan Lainus vs Sam Patterson, where once again we were treated to another submission win, where Sam Patterson secured the rear naked choke against the Canadian, getting back in the win column after his tough loss at UFC 286. This brought the end to some good early prelims. Gillian Robertson opened the prelims taking on Pollyanna Viana, where Robertson put on a spirited performance in front of her hometown people, where she did great and got the second round TKO to level it up to two wins and two losses for the Canadian fighters on the card so far. The next bout, Seri Sidi took on Ramon Tavares, where both guys had a fun back and forth fight which was super competitive. It was a close fight which made it difficult to score, nonetheless Tavares got the nod and won a close split decision. The next fight, Charles Jourdain went up against Sean Woodson, where Jourdain had the chance to put the Canadian fighters up 3-2 for the night. In a close fight, Woodson did the better it seemed across the three rounds, spoiling the party and getting a good win. Brad Katona was up next to get a score for the Canadians and try and get a win, where he was taking on Garrett Armfield. The two went ahead in a back and forth fight where Katona had the same fate as all the rest of the male Canadians before him, taking an L, losing a unanimous decision to Garrett Armfield to bring the end to some lacklustre prelims. The main card started with a fun fight at featherweight with the always game Arnold Allen taking on the undefeated Mavzar Ivlov. The fight was very close and did cause a stir of debate online around the decision, where to me it seemed Ivlov did the better work across the first two rounds, mixing his striking and grappling but in the third round Allen was more improved, fighting with some urgency. Ivlov won the decision to remain undefeated and climbing the featherweight rankings. Next up, Mark andre Barrio took on Chris Curtis in a bout at middleweight where we was promised action. Canadian Barrio was hoping to bring home a win for the Canadians. The first two rounds were a dud, with little to no actions, with fans booing after the end of the second round. The third round had much more action with both guys actually going for it, but the fight went to a decision, where once again a Canadian man lost on the card, with Chris Curtis securing the win. Mike Maylott was up next and all of Canada's hopes were on his shoulders to get the win against Neil Magny. Maylott had huge fanfare and crowd reaction where he did great over the first two rounds, dominating and piecing up Neil Magny. The third round, fatigue began to kick in for Maylott but he was still dominating the round from on top until Magny managed to reverse the position and started raining down ground and pound on a tired Maylott. With 17 seconds left, the ref jumped in and it was a brilliant comeback win for Neil Magny and a failed night for the Canadian lads on the card. The co-main event, Raquel Pennington took on Myra Buena Silva for the vacant women's bantamweight title, where the first round Silva pressured and threatened with submissions, where Pennington did great defending against the submissions. As the fight went on, Silva tired, where Pennington took over the fight and beat up a tired Silva and went on to dominate the rest of the fight. The fight wasn't the most amazing spectacle and went to a decision, where Pennington won the unanimous decision. Seeing her crowned champion was a cool moment, but overall the fight was not the best. The entire card wasn't the best and very lacklustre and rested on the shoulders of the main event, where Drikas Duplessis took on Sean Strickland, where Strickland came out to a superstar's welcome in Canada. Both men went to war in a fun and competitive fight, where Sean Strickland seemed to do the better work in rounds 1 and 2, being brilliant with his forward pressure and jab. DDP did try using his wrestling but Strickland was more effective with his striking early on, damaging DDP's face. The third and fourth round, Strickland took his foot off the gas, where DDP managed to press forward, landing the more damaging shots and landing takedowns to rob the third and fourth round from Strickland. The fifth round was a very close round and watching the fight live I had no idea which way it went. The fight was tallied up and the decision went in the favour of Duplessis who is now the new middleweight champion. Honestly it was such a difficult fight to score and could have gone to either man but if I'm being honest I wouldn't have been opposed to a draw. This fight and the drama it served up was a very good way to end a very poor card. 
that brought the end to an underwhelming night of fights. The early prelims were quite fun, with some submission wins. Gillian Robertson started the prelims in a dominant display, but onwards from here it wasn't the best watch, with some lacklustre action and the male Canadian fighters letting their hometown down. The main card wasn't the best viewing, but Neil Magny's win was a fun moment and a great comeback. The co-main event wasn't the best watch, but it was cool to see Raquel achieve such a monumental achievement in the sport. The main event was a great fight which really saved the end of this pay-per-view, which when I grade it, it gets an E+. A very poor card to start the year off and a very harsh score. Hopefully third time is the charm for Canada and the UFC can finally give you an amazing card. Did you enjoy the video? Let us know down in the comments below. What did you think of UFC 297 and do you think it's going to be the worst card of the year? Put that down in the comments below. Leave a like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe for more MMA and fight content coming soon. Sorry this review is a bit late, I had no voice last week so I had to amend it and then bring this back and then obviously it will make up uh, my end of year review for the rankings of every pay-per-view of 2024. But yeah, we hope you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more content and we'll catch you in the next one.